All right, so it's uh, Mark and Andy coming to you from the Bonding Podcast, and we are talking about, this is a special episode about the one and only George Lazenby himself. George Lazenby. So we just talked about On Her Majesty's Secret Service, and I wanted to do a special, I wanted to give Lazenby enough credit, and I don't want to just gloss over it and move on to the next film. I, I was... Again, this is all new to me. Mark, you'll, you're familiar with this. You've grown up with this. But I was thoroughly impressed with George Lazenby. For a man who's never acted, I thought his acting was really, really okay. You know, one of the did things, a good job. Yeah, one of, one of the things that he complains about or has complained about that, I, that I've read, that, yeah, he was a male model. He had no previous acting experience. He's taking on one of the biggest roles on, on the In the world. Yeah, but he said he felt very isolated because Peter Hunt apparently thought that I, I'm some sort of method acting uh, approach. I don't know, but he thought that if George w- was more alone, he'd be better as Bond because Bond's a lone sort of character or sort of thing. So he, apparently, he, he he felt quite I- isolated by the director. He didn't get many acting hints or things like that. He's complained about it in the past, but I think he does a cracking job. Yeah. So I was telling you before I watched the the documentary. It's on Hulu, is where I saw it called "Becoming Bond." Yeah, uh, I'm sure you've heard about it. You need to see it. If you haven't watched it, anybody watch watching this, if you're a Bond fan, this is pretty good. But especially if you're curious about Lazenby, because the guy is beyond fascinating. He, he George Lazenby narrates it, doesn't he? Does he have yeah, he's in it. I mean, he, he it. it's full on like it's a, it's a it's shot as a as an interview with him, and then interspersed with reenactments of stories uh-huh. he's telling. Now, I don't know if he's embellishing some of these stories because they're pretty pretty out there. But then again, I'm like, no, I, I don't I, know. I tend to believe him. I, why would he lie? <laughs> yeah, why would he lie? Yeah. I mean, the funny thing is, is throughout the thing is, so they show clips of him. Well, not clips of him. There's reenactments of him, like uh, coming to America and being on the Johnny Carson show here in America. Well, they have Dana Carvey playing Johnny Carson because Dana Carvey from SNL does a great Johnny Carson impersonation. Mm-hmm. So they they they, they spent some money making this thing. It's mm-hmm. very well done and it's funny and it's entertaining. So the things I it's, learned it's about an this interesting guy, story, if you think about it, I mean, they'll tell what you know, and I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll jump in. Well, this, the, the, James Bond is one of the big cinematic roles. Sean Connery makes the role his own, is internationally famous, decides he doesn't want to do it anymore, stops doing it, so they're looking for a new James Bond. And they interview hundreds of, you know, audition yeah. hundreds of people, lots of people are going for this. And George Lazenby is a jobbing male model from Australia. I think yeah, he sold at this cars. Time. Yeah, he sold so, well, cars. So he went from... So he so let's let's back up and we'll catch up there. So f- from the beginning, he started out school. He, he school was never good for him. He was very at this it, in today's day and age, they would probably say he has ADHD. He can't focus on school. Drops out of school. He needs to make money. He gets a job. Somebody like his dad knows somebody who is a owns a, a garage, a mechanic shop. So he starts becoming a mechanic. The guy owns as a car dealership. He wants to make more money. He notices the car salesmen are making more money. So he's like, I want to do that. His zero experience as a car salesman goes on to become the sales manager because he's so good at it. Hmm. What, he then goes on. Someone tells him about a male modeling. I'm, I'm jumping way ahead. He's in, he's in England. He gets a job as a male model. He's making money. And again, the man has, this was never his goal. No ambition for any of this stuff. He just is in. The, he's a he's the perfect example of when opportunity knocks. He doesn't just open the door. He embraces it. Yeah, with, yeah. And, and no fear of failure. It just didn't. Mm. He didn't care. I think to him it was just a big goof. He's like, so what? If I don't do it, who cares? If I don't make it, who cares? I'm having a good time. And he his, did. His, his story is quite fascinating because he he just went for it. And, yeah. So and in, somehow landed. The biggest role in cinema. Getting to and the audition, he didn't want to do it anymore. So, getting to the audition again, based on his 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 version of it, he his his flatmate, who's another male model, has double booked himself for one night. He's got a date 
and his agent, he because this guy's trying to get into acting, the, the his, his roommate. He says, I'm supposed to go to this movie premiere with my agent, but I got this. Like, my girlfriend just came into town. Can you go to the movie premiere with my with my agent? Just you know, just have a good time. He does. The agent takes a liking to Lazenby and says, you know what? I think, you know, you've got a future. You could probably be an actor. And he's like, whatever. He doesn't put any thought to it. She gives him a call and says, listen, I need you to go down to this audition. I think you're perfect for the role. And she wouldn't tell him what it was. And she said, just go in there. Uh, or no, come to my office and I'll tell you about it. So she gets to the office and he, she says to him, it's, it's, uh, it's the role of James Bond. Connery's not yeah. coming back. They want a new James Bond. I think you're going to be, you're the right guy. And he's like, I don't, I, I don't know how to act. This is James Bond. This is the biggest character in the world. So he, she said, go down to the office and just get in front of the guy and you'll, you'll be fine. He has no idea what he's up against. He walks in and he goes up to the reception, sees all these people sitting in tuxedos around him, goes to the reception. She's like, yeah, I'm here to see, uh, and I forget the guy's name, who was the casting director. And she goes, do you have, is your name on the list? And he's like, uh, I should be, tells her. She's like, sir, you're not on my list. And he goes, well, I should be. My agent told me to come down here. And she said something like, are you a, are you in the actor's union? And he said, sure. Now, he wasn't. He's she goes, well, yeah, let's call and find She's like, let's call and find out. He goes, well, I wouldn't bother him right now. They're probably busy, right? Mm. It's so, just incredible guts and, and bravado. Well, yeah, basically. so. She, he's not on the list. She tells him to leave the office. He calls the agent and she said, Oh no, you don't have an appointment. You have to, I just want you to get in, just get in there. I know you, you've got the, 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 the skill set. just get in the office. And he gets mad and he goes down and gets a, he gets a, a Sean Connery haircut. And he, he goes, goes like, to the door just to get the haircut. He gets one of his old suits. Yeah, that's right. It's the, he goes in to ask the guy for a suit, just like Sean Connery's. And the guy said, it'll take you six weeks to get one. And he sees a suit hanging. Again, this is according to Lazenby. He sees a suit hanging on a, on a rack. And he said, well, what about that one there? And he goes, well, that's Sean Connery's suit. He never picked it up. And, I mean, um, it's just crazy, the, the, the happenstance. and the, yeah. yeah. Well, and according to him, again, I don't know how much of this is true, because Lazenby, this, this document, he's very, it could be made up. He steals the suit. The guy turns his head to get something. He just takes the suit and walks out the door. Oh, puts the suit on. It. That was it. again according to this thing. Again, I don't know how much of it's true. I, okay. I knew about the suit being Connery's, and he hadn't yeah. picked it up. But I didn't know he finished so it. He puts the suit on. He's outside the door of the um, the auditions, and he sees that at one point the receptionist kind of ducks down behind the desk, or she she, she leaves the desk for a minute. And he walks straight in, or something. Yeah. He just walks straight into the guy's office, mm. and the guy's like, "Who are you?" Well, he said he was standing there. With a Connery pose, he had like his arms crossed like this, and just leaning against the doorway. Yeah. And the guy was—he said he was on the phone with um, one of the producers, probably Saltzman. And he's like, "Look, I know we're having struggles getting Bond." And he's—and they see, and he's this guy he goes, "Who are you?" And the guy just looks at him, he goes, "Lazenby, George Lazenby." Oh, did he do it like that? That now that's what he says. Again, I we don't know that. It's, again, it's, but according to him, the the uh, cast agent says. Uh, let me call you back. I think I got somebody that might work for you. And he hangs up the phone. Then he calls Saltzman. He says, let's go um, let's go talk to Saltzman. And they go to his office. And he said when he got there, go to, again, this is all according to Lazenby in the documentary. He said when he got there, Saltzman's got his bare feet up on the desk. And he looks like a Harvey Weinstein kind of just overweight, mm. marking orders at people. And he looks at Lazenby. He's like, uh, you know, just he tells him kind of motion. He's on the phone. He says, just sit down. And Lazenby said, I looked at him. He goes, I'm not going to sit with my face two feet from his two bare feet on the desk. He goes, so I just went and sat on an, over on the couch. He goes, no, I went and looked out the window. Mm. And he looks at the casting agent and he's and Saul's and he's like, who is this guy? And he goes, I think he's your next bond. And they said that they started talking and he, he liked the way he was looking out the window and you see, he, he just had this air about him. And he said, all right. And he, Salisbury said wasn't sold on him, but he said um, he brought Peter Hunt in to look at him. And Peter Hunt was kind of like, I don't know. He's got like zero acting experience. And then they had a conversation, Hunt and, and, and uh, Lazenby, according to him. And he said, um, I want to screen test you and we'll see how you look. 
And he said after the screen test that Hunt fought tooth and nail for him. He's like, this is our guy. Mm. I, I heard and, that they filmed a fight scene and he punched a, a stunt yeah. range in his face, broke, broke his nose, and they thought, yeah, this is the guy. He's got. Yeah, that, got, that might be it. So uh, got it's super moves. Fast. But yeah, I mean, so. God. Uh, he so he does all of this. There's all this luck and he goes for it and then he gets the role and decides he doesn't want to do it again. It's a fascinating why? What it was just it's an interesting story. I've always thought Lazenby is an interesting man. Yeah, well, that's the fascination is this guy was literally handed the keys to the kingdom. Yeah. It's like someone saying, Mark, here I got this winning lottery ticket. All you have to do is go down to the the shop and cash it in. Yeah. And you're you're set for life. And he took that and said, "Yeah, thanks, not interested." And I don't know if it was bravado, if he thought he was going to be bigger or better. Um, they don't really address that in the documentary, as as far as I would have liked him to go. Mm. The way he made it seem in the documentary was that, uh, like we talked about in the previous episode on the podcast, that he was. He, they wanted him to sign this, what was called at the time, a slave contract. And I know the slave is a horrible term, but they, that's what it was called. And basically what the contract was, and it was they were, there were bad contracts, was that they controlled everything he did. Yes, he was going to make a lot of money, but they controlled everything, where he went, how he dressed, yeah, uh, who he could date. I mean, it was just really bizarre, a super long contract of everything. They controlled your life. And he just was like, no. And they offered him a million dollars cash just to sign. And then mm. plus all the money he would make. Uh, uh, it takes an awful lot of guts to, to walk away from a uh, million dollars on the table. There you go. I, I mean, I would have signed it in a heartbeat. Yeah, it takes some guts. I don't have any that. integrity. Mm. <laughs> I have zero integrity. Uh, I don't the, give the, the again, the times are changing, though. 69 into 70. Collars are getting longer. Things are changing. Bond, a lot of people said was you know coming to coming to an end with the sixties. So, and I, I know certainly his manager was telling him that. So yeah, and I, I think, think he might have got some advice. bad advice. Yeah, you know they could have negotiated a contract. They could have gone and said, you know, how about we do two films? I, I, I mean, you and I have talked a little bit about it. I would have loved to have seen another Lazenby Bond film. I just, I think. So when I, I, mean, I like when the next one opens, it's very straight into it's Connery looking for Blofeld in various different places, beating people up. It's very aggressive. Where's Blofeld? Where's Blofeld? And it follows on from Majesty's like that. He's obviously, you know, he's he's on a mission of vengeance looking for Blofeld. But well, sure. other than that, they don't they don't address it. They move straight along. Now, why did Connery come back? And I know we'll talk about that in the next film. But a million, uh, a million dollars and two pictures or something. That I, th I think they offered him the, the head of the film studio, whose name I forget. After Honor Majesties didn't do as well as they wanted to do, and, and Lazenby walked away, he said, "I think it's David Pickering or something from Warner Brothers. I don't know. A million dollars and whatever two films Connery wants to make." on the table to come back to do one more. So he, he went for, he did it for the money. He, uh, he set up some charitable foundation in, in Scotland with the proceeds or something like that. Okay. I didn't yeah. know if maybe he thought that bond had been tarnished by Lazenby and he wanted to bring it back. No, he came back for a big money deal. And I think he got to find, he, he got to make two different films on the back of it as well. But I know he got, I think it was a million dollars and he used it to set up some charitable trust in Scotland. Mm. That's why he did it. Well, anyway, I, Roger. I would have, um, I would have been really curious to see what Lazenby would have done with another film, and you know, he I think did. He'd have been great. Yeah, he did do some acting and followed up, but I mean, he kind of disappeared from everything. He, tried, he, got, he was getting involved with Bruce Lee. He was going to do a karate movie or something with Bruce Lee, but then Bruce Lee died suddenly. I think he was out there somewhere in the Far East to do this movie with Bruce he, Lee, and the guy died. He so was. He, he was. Tried. He was supposed to have breakfast with Bruce Lee the day he died. That's it. That's the story. Yeah, so. they were going to do um a, a movie together. Do something. I think there. I, th I can't. I can't be sure. I think there's some movie called The Man from Hong Kong, and Lazenby's in it. He's got. He's wearing a moustache. I think. I think it's called yeah. The Man from Hong Kong. 
Well, but, that's yeah, the other thing too. And he got in, I think he came your way. He came stateside and got involved in real estate and made his money. That, and he ended up marrying um, Pam Shriver, the tennis player. Yes, I think that's correct. They didn't really address his where he's at now. Or, or I mean, is he, I think he's yeah, is still, he still alive. Yeah. He's still around, I yeah, thought. Yeah. Um, they don't address a lot of where he's at now, but he seems to come out on the other side okay. You yeah. know. I think people have had, a lot more respect for it now. The, the, the film has changed over the years, but people lord it now. A lot of people are like, you know, it's a classic Bond. Your man Christopher Nolan always says Honor Majesties is, I think, his favorite Bond movie. So oh, people, nice. people love it now. I've always well, liked I think, it. You know, it's hard because when you have Sean Connery, who's, who is iconically, I don't know if he's everybody's Bond, but I mean, he he is Bond. Well, he, made, he he made the role, you know, but his own and um, um, and what it, and sent it on its way to, to what it is now. I mean, Bond was massive with Connery. It was a big and, blow. You know, I, I know you're a you're a Roger guy. Yeah, I'm a Roger uh, guy. I grew up with Roger. You know what I forgot to do, and we'll do it on this one real quick. I forgot to see where this film falls on the scale. Where does Honor Majesty's rank, do you think, out of all the I'd Bond say films? Yeah, I'd say it's top ten. I'd say it's about I'd say about seven or eight. So according to Movie Phone, which is the one I've used to rank that they have a ranking system, and it's not scientific, it's just their their opinion. Movie phone has this one ranked at number ten. Yeah, top ten. And it says here, there's a little line on it that says Lazenby, George Lazenby tends to be overlooked whenever fans debate the best Bond actor, and that's a shame. Lazenby played a much more vulnerable Bond in the sequel, which didn't necessarily sit well with audiences accustomed to Sean Connery's suave, rugged version of 007. Yeah, yeah. Um, but over the years, people have come to appreciate that for something slightly different. I think he does a great job in it. And it needed a bit, a bit more of a vulnerable touch to it with the wedding and the death and everything else. I think he does it well. Yeah, well, uh, and as I said in the in the previous episode about the show, the movie, I I really enjoyed this story, uh, the film. It was an enjoyable film to watch. Sets were stunning. I, I thought, I mean, again, Lazenby, for not ever being an actor, I thought he did a really good job. Mm. You know, I know they had to work with his his uh his accent because he's Australian. That's right. And they they talk about that in the documentary how he went with a he had a voice diction coach to work with him on how to sound British, not Australian. Mm. But but he looks he I, looks great. He's got a swag. I think the word about Lazenby is swagger. You're right. He, he's got a swagger yeah. to him. I, I, like I just yeah. If he if he walked into a room, I he he would get people's heads would turn. Yeah. And and I love the fact, and I think we talked about it, but if we didn't, we'll talk about it here. I do love the fact that his defiance of not only signing the not signing the contract, but he grew he grew a beard, and he grew his hair out, mm. and Salzman called him and said, "You know, don't I don't want you coming to the premiere unless you cut your hair and shave your beard." And he was like, "Yeah, that's not going to happen," mm. and he showed up. With a smoking hot girl, and he showed up, and he's like, you know, this is this is who I am, and people ate it up. And I mean, a guy who had zero concern about his image, his thoughts, his character, where he was going to go, he just didn't care. He was going to be George Lazenby, whether you liked it or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I kind of like him. Yeah, I have to admire it. Like we all wish mm -hmm. we had the hood spot to say, you know what, screw you, I'll do what I want, and I'll yeah. figure it out. Do my own way. I mean, he's done it his whole life. He's never had a plan, and he seems to have done okay. Yeah, seems to be quite yeah. a happy man. I know I've seen interviews with him. He always seems quite chill with where he is. Yeah, I think he's got a hint of regret. Like I wonder what, like what might have been, which we all kind of probably oh, yeah. do, yeah. no matter where we are in life. Like oh, I wonder if, what, you know, if I stayed with this girl, or if I'd have taken this mm -hmm. job, or if I'd done this. But what if I'd stayed being James Bond? It's a hell of a question. <laughs> I mean, yeah, his is what if I stayed being the biggest movie star in the world? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Man. I think I'm going to go into obscurity. And guy. Do I like George. Yeah, so I give kudos to George. I, 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 I'm i fascinated by this guy, and I hope we uh, we maybe talk about him later on. 
But that's all I got about George. If you got anything else you want to talk about with George? No, um, that's it. well, apart, we talked about the ski jump, didn't we? Turn turn up years later. That I always thought that was quite interesting. He came up with that one because that's an iconic James Bond moment, and for that to come yeah. from George Lazenby, I think that's quite cool. Yeah, that's good. Well, good on you, George. Wherever you are, I hope life is uh, yeah, well everything done, you thought it would Get be. All right. Well, I'm gonna sign off here from uh, Nashville. Mark, how are you doing? You gonna say goodbye to everybody? Good evening, America. As uh, Def Leppard once said, "Hello, America." <laughs> America, fuck yeah. America, fuck yeah. Fuck All right. Yeah. See you later. This has been a Touch of Madness production, brought to you by the Creative Minds at Tommy Twins Media.